Hey there, YouTube fans. I just wanted to take a minute to drop a note and let you guys know that I released part two of my Access Business and Contact Database. This is a full featured database that I'm building. It's not a teaching database like I usually prepare. This is going to be a database you can actually use to run your business. And I'm recording videos to show you how I do it every step of the way. I released part one back in October and I just finished part two today. Part one set up all the basics like your entities, which are people or companies, your entity list, the ability to track multiple emails, phone numbers, addresses for each person, something new I call helper data, which you can use instead of having thousands of small tables in your database, you can put it all in one table. Things like name, prefix, suffix, that kind of stuff. Part two adds a helper data editor, a group listing, so you can have different groups that people can be in. You could jump back and forth between the groups and the people. And of course, relations between different people in the database. So you can put in spouses, you can put in parents and children. And when you put in one relationship, it'll ask you to make the opposite relationship automatically. And that's all stuff covered in part two. You can find out more information on my website. I'll put a link down below in the description below the video. Keep watching if you're interested in more information. The rest of this video is the introduction to part two. So enjoy. Welcome to the ABCD, the Access Business and Contact Database Part 2, building the core of the database, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we are continuing building the core of the database. In Part 1, we built a helper table so that we didn't have to have a million little tables in our database, like name, prefix, suffix, title, gender, and so on. In Lesson 1, we're going to build a helper data form. You can double click on a field like prefix, then the helper form will pop up and show you all the prefixes. You can then edit them there. System values, of course, will be locked so they can't be changed or deleted. In lesson two, we're then gonna take that form and make it so you can select a value, click on the set and close button, and it will return the value to whatever form and field called the helper form. So we can then use the same form with any field in our database. We'll also set up something called a composite key to prevent duplicate values in the helper table. In lesson three, we're going to set up a helper data editor form where you will see a list of all of the helper table types on the left-hand side, prefix, suffix, gender, and so on. And on the right side, you'll see all the values in there. This will be a double subform with continuous forms. Kind of neat to set this up. In lesson four, we're going to set up groups. Each entity, each person, can be in one or more groups. We'll then add those groups to a subform on the person's form, the entity form. Then we'll go the other way. We'll make a group list form where you can see all of the groups and which people are in that group. Then we'll make it so you can jump back and forth between the two of them. So, for example, if I have my record up, Richard Rost, I can see what groups I'm in. Then if I want to go to the parents group, that'll jump to the group list and show all the parents in that group. That's a many-to-many -many relationship between people and groups. Speaking of relationships, we're going to set up relations in Lesson 5. Relations allows us to set up a relationship between any two people or entities. You can do parent and child, you can do spouses, you can do co-workers, whatever relationships you want to set up. Then in Lesson 6, we're going to set up opposite relationships. So, for example, if Sue and Doug are married... And on Doug's record, you put in that Sue is his wife. It'll ask you, hey, do you want to put the opposite relationship in? It will then automatically go to Sue's record and put Doug in as the husband. That's creating the opposite relation automatically. Here's a quick walkthrough of the new features. From the entity list, let's open up my account. As we did before, you can change any of the helper data right from here. Or you can double click. That'll open up the name prefix box now. It's the helper data, and we know it's the name prefix because this guy called it. I can now add a new value in here like Mr., like that, spelled out. Hit set and close, and that will update this box and drop Mr. in there. See how that works? If I decide later on I don't want that, I can come in here, delete it. Of course, this Mr. is a system value, so I can't hit delete on that. I'm hitting delete right now. Nothing is happening. But whichever one I pick, if I pick doctor now, hit set and close, it drops that in there. That's the helper data form. And the cool thing is it works from every one of these helper drop-down boxes. 
Helper Data now has an editor. This is eventually going to be part of an admin menu we're going to set up differently, but for now it's on the main menu. There's the Helper Data Editor. This is two continuous forms side by side, and as you click on one of these, it updates this guy. See? Click, and it filters this list. You can add new lists down here, or you can add or edit the existing lists in the system very easily. We set up groups. Here's our group list. These are all the groups that we set up in the system. Employees, parents, Starfleet, students, vendors. You can set up any group you want. We don't have a group editor yet. That's coming in the next part. But you can go to the table right now and add more groups. When you're adding people to groups, which you can do from this form, you can drop down and pick from either their person number, or you can drop this down and pick from the person over here based on name, whichever you like, and it will update the other one. Let's go to LMNOP Bank, and I can now double click here, and that will jump to LMNOP Bank's record. See? Groups are now right here. Notice we change the tabs so they take on the color of whichever subform we're on. So I can see which groups each person or entity belongs to, and I can now jump to the students group right here. Double click. There's students. See that? Oh, there's Richard Ross. Let me double click there. Goes to his record. So you can jump back and forth between groups and people or entities. We now have relations or relationships. I didn't use the word relationships because to me that says database table relationships. So I call them relations inside the database. Let's go to someone else here. Let's go to Will Riker. Go to relations. You can see he's got Jean-Luc Picard listed as a supervisor. Deanna Troy is in there with two relations, his wife and his subordinate. Let's add Doug Jones and Doug Jones is a coworker. When I leave that record, the database says, hey, the opposite relation doesn't exist. Would you like to create one now? Say yes. It goes to Doug Jones's record and adds Will Riker as a coworker. That's creating opposite relationships automatically. So all of that is covered in part two of the ABCD core database. There's about four hours of video total. For more information on the ABCD, there's the website. Again, this is not a teaching database, so I assume you understand the basic concepts. I will show you how I'm building this database step by step, but the point is so that you understand the construction so you can modify it yourself. If you don't know VBA or table relationships or any of that stuff, I strongly suggest my beginner expert advanced and developer courses. I'm using Microsoft 365, which is roughly equivalent to Access 2019. However, you should be good with the techniques covered in this class all the way back to about 2007. It should work with every version between then and now. Of course, if you have any questions, post them in the Access Forum. If you'd like to have the ABCD customized for your business, contact me. There's my consulting page. You can also feel free to email me directly. Or if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments section below the video.